Thanks, Dan. Uh, welcome to the Milford Board of Selectmen's meeting, Monday, October 2nd, uh, 2017. Uh, before we started the meeting, um, I just wanted to mention, obviously, everything that's on the news regarding um, that horrible act that took place in uh, Las Vegas. Um, you know, it just brings a lot of stuff home when we talk about first, when we think about our first responders, our police and our firemen, and just out of respect for all the victims, if we could just take a moment of silence, I think uh, that's the least that we could do. Thank you. Uh, first agenda item is the signing of the warrant. Move, Mr. Chairman. I would second that. Also vote in favor, and that's unanimous. We have a couple sets of minutes. This is uh, for the regular session on September 18th. Move, Mr. Chairman. I would second. Also vote in favor, and that's unanimous. And we also have minutes of a regular session on September 28th. Mr. Chairman, on the regular session of September 28th, um, I just want to make sure I didn't misunderstand or my recollection isn't different than on the minutes. On item number three, mm -hmm. um, we, it, it appears that as though from the minutes we took under uh, advisement the 80 to 118. I just want to make sure and check with the other board members, their recollection, your recollection and Mike's rec uh, recollection, if it wasn't our intent to um, that was the number we said we were going to post it that. Right? Yes. Even though it's still negotiable? Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's right. the range. Right. Um, but it says, the, the last sentence says it was consensus yeah. board to take that salary range under advisement. I remember we took a salary under advisement as it related to, to um, stipends. stipends. Okay. Um, yeah, that was a solid number. Okay. And if we need to make a vote, we can make the vote in old, old business for that range. It just looks open-ended if we leave it like this. So the question is, what did we vote on? Mm -hmm. Was it our intention to vote? Did we not make the motion? Um, we can leave this like this, and then I'll just make a motion sure. uh, and see if it's the will of the board to post at that 80 to 118 in case there was no... Yeah, because I do think we were... Unanimous in that. All right. Okay. So uh, why don't we do that? We'll leave Where's it there. For now? Yeah, okay. and we'll yep. make the change. Sure. So uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, uh, I would move to approve the regular session uh, meeting minutes for September 28, 2017. And I would second that as well. All right. Also vote in favor, and that's unanimous. Um, Rick, I'd like to hold off on the executive session sure. minutes, yep. um, just because a lot of this is obviously still ongoing. So. Sure. Absolutely. All right. Yep. Good. Absolutely. Okay. Next is invitation to speak. Is there anyone here for invitation to speak? Mr. Wheelock, is it a, an agenda item this evening that you're talking on? I'm not sure that that's relevant. Okay. That well, to speak. All right. well, we'll see. We've just been, well, tonight we're not too busy. We've just been getting tighter on that. But. I believe the way invitation to speak works is that anybody in the community can bring a grievance or a petition to their government to speak to issues that they need to speak to it would be useless to have an invitation to speak that only allowed people to speak to the issues that Town Hall wanted to speak to. So I hope that you will stop pressing this idea that invitation to speak has anything to do with the agenda. It is for anybody in the community who can't show up at Town Hall all week long. Jane, thank you. No, but I'm schooling you on the fact no, that you I don't need to you civics been, lesson. You you I gave you a shot been, and here you go again. And I'm saying that so you have either been using this. Say your this, piece or please leave. This is my piece. You should not be you making You came here tonight to talk about this, to give me a civics lesson? Absolutely. You are squelching debate when you put this little disclaimer, which is, please speak to what is on the agenda. That is not actually the purpose of invitation to speak. Well, actually, we don't even have to have an invitation to speak. You're right, so. but if you're earnest in it... Jamie, I'm giving you a shot. Do you have something to talk about, or is my civics lesson over? Well, that was one thing I came to speak to. I also have more things to speak to. Please get on with it. All right. Um, I wanted to speak on this issue back in June when it was first on the agenda and uh, the board chose to pass over the RFP for Middle School East because they thought it needed See, this is on the look. agenda tonight. I appreciate this. That's irrelevant, okay? So I showed up on that night to speak 
and uh, I was not recognized by the either then chair or the acting chair that night. I don't know what happened, but or it could have been the night that the Girl Scouts were here, and uh, just that whole thing got passed. Invitation to speak got passed over because of the break in the form. Anyhow, I don't know how long you guys had been in possession of the RFP by before that June something date, but uh, you guys thought it needed more time to look to be looked at before being talked about again. Mm -hmm. That was 13 weeks ago now. As far as I know, it hasn't been on the agenda since then. That RFP looked to me to be pretty standard boilerplate, to tell you the truth. I didn't think it was very far out. I think the issue is very important, but that RFP itself didn't actually require a lot of scrutiny, uh, from my opinion. So I was surprised that it didn't come back any time sooner, and I'm sorry that we've wasted 13 weeks not talking about the future of Middle School East. Um, anyhow, I'm glad it's on the agenda tonight. Hopefully you guys have reviewed the RFP. And um, again, this is all old news because this is just what I wrote back down in uh, June and July. Uh, the RFP was never on Town Hall's website. I don't know if it's gone on the website since then, but I asked Rick for a copy I will of once it. it's approved, yeah. Even the draft should be on the website so people can assess the draft because after the <clears throat> draft is approved, there's no negotiating what the thing is. That is the whole reason that you have a selectman's meeting and an invitation to speak so that people can understand the RFP because once the RFP is signed off on, that's fixed. And the point is the draft needs public review by people in the community who care about this issue. So waiting for the draft to be finalized and to be the RFP before putting it online is a huge disservice to the entire community, okay? Thank you. Um, so again, I would say if there's ever any RFPs, drafts, they should be on the new and improved website for all people to have a better understanding of what the scope of the R RFP is. And uh, more of the town citizens should be weighing in on what they think the RFP looks like, whether they recognize enough about the subject to actually speak on it with any authority or if they just off the top of their head can tell there's something wrong with it. Um, so as I said, we haven't talked about this issue for approximately 13 weeks and I hope that we will not rush into finalizing the draft of the RFP and then putting the RFP out. Town Hall, I spoke at the town meeting a long time ago about not rushing to sell the property and you guys assured me that indeed it would all be handled very carefully. Uh, and we passed money to winterize the building and secure it so it wouldn't uh, suffer any uh, seasonal type damage and would be well taken care of, which means, again, we don't actually have to rush into formalizing the RFP because there's money in the budget to take care of the building and the town can evaluate how to use the building or how to dispose of the building more carefully. The real point I'm saying is one of the things that happened was the school committee had a middle, a middle school East reuse committee, but the tailoring of the question was so fine-tuned that that wasn't even a really useful examination of how the town should be using the space. It was a custom-tailored question to get an answer that I don't think necessarily served the whole town. Um, anyhow, I hope the draft spends a certain amount of time in the air, in public, with room for time for the community to comment about it. Middle School East is absolutely the heart of downtown as far as the biggest chunk of land that we control in downtown. And if the town hall lets that property slip away, without carefully, carefully planning how to make it work, including making sure that there's community benefits agreements in the plan and all sorts of stuff, it would be a real shame. Please don't pass a quick, please don't approve the language of the draft and formalize it prematurely. Thanks, Jamie. Mr. Chairman, I just want to say one thing, and I want to engage with the board, not necessarily 
Uh, I, I'm comfortable with Mr. Wheelock's disdain for the uh, Board of Selectmen. I can live with that as an elected official, but there are a lot of people that worked on that uh, middle school reuse and uh, evaluation who were not elected officials, didn't sign up for it. And to, and to put their report into question because it doesn't serve Mr. Wheelock's needs, I think uh, is a disservice to the people who volunteered for that, uh, volunteered for that, spent a lot of, a great deal of their personal time yep. away from their family. Um, you know, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that can be said about the speed at which government moves, um, but to, to contradict yourself and uh, then uh, chastise this board for taking 13 weeks to evaluate the procedures and then uh, could be critical about uh, rushing into something. Um, just defies logic, but certainly Mr. Wheelock is entitled to his opinion, and uh, I just want to make sure that it's clear that I don't share those opinions. Okay. I appreciate that, though. All right, we don't have any scheduled public hearings or scheduled appointments, so we're going to go right into the town administrator's report. Rick? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm very pleased to report that the town has been awarded a recycling dividends grant in the amount of $10,400. This is through the Sustainable Materials Recovery Program. This grant is uh, annually awarded to communities that have implemented specific programs and policies proven to maximize, re maximize reuse, recycling, and waste reduction. I want to thank Paul Mazzucchelli and the Board of Health uh, for their work in securing uh, this important grant. Uh, I want to update the Board on the 319 Stormwater Project. Um, you may have noticed that there's some work being done at the corner of Sumner and Diller Street. Uh, we've received a number of phone calls. Uh, this is the public, I'm notifying the public that the work has commenced. This is the Lower Huckleberry Brook, Brook Stormwater Treatment and Wetland Park. As the board may recall, we received a grant in April of 2015 of approximately $225,000, representing 60% of the total cost of the program. The remainder of the funds, as the board also may recall, were appropriated at town meeting. The scope of this project is to design and construct a treatment wetland at the corner of Sumner and Diller Street to capture and treat runoff from the Purchase Street and Fountain Street drainage basin. And I will keep the board updated as this project progresses. And then just finally, Mr. Chairman, an update on the uh, town hall gas main. The plumbing inspector has been in constant contact with Eversource. Uh, they sh will be here tomorrow to do work on the gas line. In addition, there was damage to the brick portion of our building. We are getting a quote for those repairs, uh, and there are additional repairs, unfortunately, needed inside the building here and in room uh, 14. Uh, we've also put the insurance carrier for the owner of the vehicle involved uh, on notice of a potential claim. So that work will be getting done, and then uh, town council will pursue the claim aspect. And that's great. all I have tonight, Mr. Chairman. All right, great. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Mr. Any Chairman? questions for Rick? Yeah, just uh, real quick, the recycling grant, do you have uh, noted the dollar amount? I'm sorry, $10,400. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. No questions. All right, Mike. Um, next, we have old business, and the first order is the town administrator's uh, annual evaluation. Uh, yes. Um, I have provided a draft to the board. Mm -hmm. uh, I have re- redone it and not any significant changes but this will now uh, include a numeric rating I think it might be easier for the board it's actually really concise and the individual board members so um, there will be performance ratings but now instead of just descriptive words there will be a rating um, yes. numerical concept to adjust to that also uh, we'll give the board an opportunity should each any member so desire to highlight maybe strengths and then areas where uh, the board thinks maybe we can uh, work a little harder on. So I've also included the tasks and object objectives that we have talked about in a prior meeting. Um, so I'd look for any comments from any board member um, as to uh, any suggested changes, comments, uh, revisions, additions, uh, and then hopefully um, um, the board can uh, agree maybe that we've got a final product here and then we can move forward. Okay. Mike, do you have any questions or comments about the evaluation? No, the only question that I, I'm sorry, I should, yes, I do have one question. The only is I'm a little unclear of when is the actual evaluation done? It, basically it, 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 in March. Okay, so the we first week of March, so that's... For a second week, depending on the board schedule. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. Okay, but okay. It will be done in March. Okay. Thank you. Then the board can change the next month, obviously, with election. Okay, have you, so. thank you. Yes. Okay. Bill? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, it's my suggestion that we even... Um, 
even simplify it further. So when we look at the performance ratings, my suggestion is we just simply do one, two, three, rather than go to the four and say that three exceeds all expectations, uh, two meets expectations, and one would be below expectations. I think it's just easier, it's cleaner. If you look at the four, uh, it's kind of skewed. And, uh, you know, two exceeds, three meets, uh, exceeds most is two. So I, I just think there's a way to simplify this to say three exceeds, two meets, and one falls below. That's one suggestion I have. And it just keeps it simpler and cleaner. Then just one other minor suggestion, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Um, so we have ADA transition. We had developed policies and procedures. Work with National Grid, stall street lights. Uh, Rick's been on that, and uh, that could represent a significant um, uh, cost reduction for the community over time, certainly over years. Uh, communication and cooperation between town departments. I just wanted to leave the caveat in this um, that it, um, with emphasis, it places emphasis on the um, uh, communication and cooperation between the the building department and um, the assessor's office. Yeah, that, because, is my, that is my understanding. Also. Yeah, but I just wanted to clarify it with words here sure. that it placed specific emphasis. That that's to say. We obviously want communication cooperation between all departments, um, but we've recently heard about some challenges, and uh, we want to make sure we improve that with emphasis there. And then, you know, uh, just for the benefit of Mike, who wasn't here for the last one, I just don't want to undersell item five, coordinated administrative tasks and duties. That is a whole lot of things that Rick is doing on a daily and weekly basis. Uh, it's coordinating schedules, meetings, uh, media uh, requests, um, warrant articles, uh, coordinating uh, things like um, our consultants and their time. And so there's a, there's a whole lot there. And I remember when we were putting this together, uh, I was worried that this wasn't going to be a part of it and said, hey, let's not leave this out. There's a lot of work there. And it may represent half of what you do, Rick, so in one item. So yes. so I just wanted to make sure that that's clear. It looks like a little bit of word, a few words there, but yeah, it's, a, it's an awful lot there. So, so that I guess my suggestion is, um, my two suggestions are that we go to the three uh, numerical rating system, one, two, and three. Three being exceeds, two being meets, and one uh, falls below expectations. And then the other thing, just add the words for this year's evaluation to include in number four with specific emphasis on uh, building uh, department and assessor's office. And I think we're good. I have no problem with that, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Rick, are you, a, you comfortable with that? I'm comfortable Very with simple that. Changes, I will redraft so. and put a copy in your box. Thank All you. Right, great. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Thank you. So. Next agenda item is the RFP for Middle School East. Mr. Chairman, we've had uh, a little while to look this over. And, um, you know, I think, I think it still needs work. I think that um, I can make a few suggestions. Um, so if we go to, for example, um, Item number two on page three, they're not numbered, but um, that we delete the word small business development. Um, because frankly, it wouldn't be a small business and part of a large chain of a CVS or Walmart wanted to um, do something there. Um, so we just say business development I think is sufficient. Um, you know, I don't know that there's any specific reason to talk about historic preservation of the building in this. Um, four is good, space available for short-term community use, um, development experience. There was another piece that uh, 
Hold on, let me get to it. These are very minor in nature, so. Um, I don't even know what page to go on, but I do want to talk about evaluation criteria, how the town will evaluate. And it, it, where at the bottom of the page it says site layout and architectural plan. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's there or it's in the requirements document. I'm actually okay with either submission requirements. I think it would be good to have an architectural conceptual plan. It's not specifically called out here. Um, but but it would be nice to be able to see if a developer would have put together a proposal what that facade would look like and what mm -hmm. that building would look like. So maybe it belongs in submission requirements, Rick, and that we put an uh, architectural conceptual plan. So again, I would strike um, number three on page three. I would strike small from number two on page three. And I would also suggest that we get the architectural uh, conceptual plan as part of the submission. I, I think what's important, and, and I, I agree with what Bill's saying, but I think there's a lot of information here that we still need some more time to review. You know, but I, I would agree with those changes. But I would, I personally would like some more time to kind of go back through the document again. All right, why don't we do this? Why don't we get a redraft with these changes, yeah. and then look at it again right. for right. second reading? Correct. Right. Thank All you. Right. Thank that you. You're okay with that? Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Easy enough. Next meeting, okay soon enough? Yes. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. Yep. Or do you guys want it before the next meeting? Yeah, that would be. Yeah, if we get oh, it you before, before, the, the, before the, yes. the meeting, but I'll put it on the agenda. Okay. Thank oh, okay. Yeah, yeah let's keep it on the agenda, keeping the ball moving yeah, forward we'll on this. Thank you very much. That's not a problem. Okay. Um, Bill, any old business? Well, any Rick. Other old business? Yeah. Rick mentioned the gas line. Yes. Um, and I know we're coming up on October town meeting, so I don't know how significant a, a difference it's going to make. But I, I just want to go back to the safety piece of it. If we need to protect that based on what's demonstrated to be able to happen, um, I don't know if this is town meeting or gas company or any, any thoughts, Rick? Um, I think gas company will take care of their aspect of it. The question we're going to have is the building. What about the barricades, yeah? Uh, the barricades, again, we're working with Eversource on that. We have not um, received a, a confirmation as to whether they will or won't at this point. Um, the plumbing inspector has been trying to talk with them daily. They will be here tomorrow, so that will be a point of discussion. Because I, here's what I worry about, and I know it took years for it to happen, but, you know, it's clearly town employees were put at some risk with the uh, breaking of that gas line. So we have the ability to do it. Uh, we, I'm sorry. The vehicle had the demonstrated ability to break that gas line off and pump this area full of gas, natural gas. It put the employees at risk. I just don't want to ever look back on something that happened and say we had the ability to uh, make it safer and we didn't in a short period of time. So my suggestion is we go to the FinCom and without further ado or further town meeting appropriation, they have emergency funds, um, and we can figure it out with the gas company in the meantime. But let's protect our gas line and our employees. That's especially when you see something happen. When you see it happen, then I think it's our obligation to react quickly. And when it's a safety issue, even more important that we do that. So um, I would say FinCom, emergency, can't be a lot of money. That's another thing. If, if somebody got hurt because we didn't spend $6,000, that would be, uh, I don't know that we'd be being responsible uh, stewards for the employees or the building. So if you could just, I don't know how the board feels about it, but if we could just move on this and 
Just get it done. Get it done. Okay. Yeah. There's an old saying, you can't put a price on safety. No, yeah. <laughs> you're right about that. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Um, the other thing is I'd like to make a motion um, that we, consistent with our discussion related to the water company uh, general manager, setting the salary at 80 to 118 k um, I'd like to make that motion now. Okay. I would second that. All right. I'll also vote affirmative, so that's unanimous. And then the last one we had talked at the last meeting about taking some time. Um, Mr. Walsh had indicated that at the time uh, I'd like to take a little more time, which is which was fine by me and remains fine by me um, regarding the water commissioner uh, stipends. And if it's this board's desire to, to go out two more weeks, I'm perfectly comfortable with that. I just wanted to loop back and if, if that's a desire to... Uh, Excuse me, you, you do need that for the, walk, for the motion. The warrant. It doesn't have to be in the warrant. The warrant's all set. What would it be? What, what well, makes it time sensitive? Well, you, you just by the town meeting, you make a decision, so it's, it's in the motion. So, you so that go we have another meeting before town meeting, right? 16th. 16th. Yeah. One more. Can we? Is that? Do you yeah, see any I'll, problem I'll with I'll that? I'll the personnel board on that Thursday night. Okay. To make sure they don't have a problem. Okay. Well, Mike, did have you? They they're not required to approve it, right? It is a little. Yeah, they would on this one uh, because it's going to be a stipend for appointed as opposed to an income stipend. Ah. So I was going to include that in the motion, but again, you, I, I'm not worried about. As long as you get the number by town meeting, I personally board will understand okay. that. I can give the range, and I don't think that'll be a problem. Yeah, just, just give, give me one little, next meeting. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Sounds so good. We'll talk about that in the next. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. I didn't realize. I, I didn't think about the appointed versus yeah. elected. It's a little unusual. Okay. That's well, all I had, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Okay. Um, Mike? No, I'm good. Okay. Well, since we were on the subject of the water company, um, do we just want to talk real quick about the process for the appointments? Um, like the public, Rick, is this a good time? Because I'd like publicly, I mean, I think we, I've been getting emails. I forwarded you the one I got of people showing interest. I know you started a file on yeah, that. Yeah, we have uh, three inquiries. Uh, three uh, okay. so interest. Excuse me. Okay. okay. So do we want, like, uh, is there a time period we give for a couple of weeks or to the next meeting to that close the day to say anyone who's interested in serving as a, a water commissioner send a letter of interest and I mean I don't know how much more formal we need to get than that but people are asking so we should probably have that but I think we need to make a decision um, you know sooner than later so that Jerry can put them to work well there's a mr. chairman you raise a good point so I think for a matter of process, I think your suggestion is a good one. Take public uh, input and um, uh, ask people if they're interested to submit their uh, intentions uh, or, or desire to serve and some qualifications. But I think as a matter of need, um, there's a need coming up very soon um, that future water commissioners come on board now to understand the process uh, that we're going through to ask any questions, to work with the consultants, to be part of executive session and part of the team as we go forward um, because still, so there are still points to negotiate. There are significant matters of concern uh, for future water commissioners. Um, what's the status of the employees might come, you know, come up? Uh, what's the latitude in, uh, for uh, hiring the GM and can they begin? Um, uh, sourcing so there's a lot of things so I think it's not only a good idea but I think it's required mm -hmm. that we move forward fairly quickly I, I don't see a lot of good a lot of latitude here no I think there is an urgency so two there, weeks so. is I think two weeks is fine and the 16th okay. we so look to uh, make our decision on the town website we're looking for letters of interest and sure. supporting resume or supporting yeah. qualifications yeah, yeah. Uh, qualifications I don't want to get so bureaucratic that if someone sends a letter and includes it but they right. didn't do a resume yeah. you know, yeah. some of them one has one has been more of a qualifications letter we we'll just judge Perfect. them based on what we receive right yeah. okay okay and two weeks from tonight is that the board's pleasure as far as closing out yeah do we want to close it before then so we can make appointments or possibly yeah, we we'll try to close it the, th the Thursday before so we have them in our right. packets I was gonna say the week before okay. so that we need a date. 12th, I think it is. Mike beat me. <laughs> That's not a lot of time. That's 11 days. We're moving fast. Right. Yeah. At the 12th, am I right? Someone, like Rick said, some people have already expressed right, interest. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Right yeah. Meeting. We walked into my office. So Thursday, Thursday the 12th. 
Thursday the 12th. Okay. on the website tomorrow okay thank you okay like I'm sorry you said you're all set with old business mm -hmm. you know, okay I'm good right all right so moving on to new business uh, first thing we have is a traffic aid request for Central Street from the police chief uh, looking for two-hour parking limit signs to be placed from the curb cut for the driveway at 160 Central Street to the corner of Central and North Bow Street move mr. chairman I second I'll make that unanimous Next, a special town meeting warrant approval. Mr. Chairman, I just have one uh, recommendation. Um, I, I would recommend that we strike Article 15. I know there was uh, some confusion because of the two votes that the board made, but ultimately our Article 14 is consistent with what the voters voted on. So I would uh, go forward with the one change to strike Article 15. question I, I have is how, what is article 14 and article 15 how do they both get in here there when we when we made our uh, votes and uh, there were there was a requirement by the uh, Attorney General's office to clarify and put in the requirements for zoning uh, right. we also made the change to include um, testing and growing correct that, uh, that testing and growing is consistent with, and, and the uh, and sales is consistent with Article 14. We never pulled Article 13 from, re I'm sorry, Article 15 from review uh, at the planning board. Okay. So now what we're saying is Article 14 is what was voted on town by town meeting. meeting, or not town meeting, by right. the voters. Right. Right. And Article 15, no reason for it to go forward. I would agree with that. I would second the motion. Okay. I'll also vote in favor, make that unanimous. Um, we also know um, that the Attorney General's office said that if any language is changed from what the voters voted on, they won't, um, I don't know the word, Jerry, but ratify it or, um, so I think there seems to be some confusion about that that we should probably talk about at some point as yeah. well. We'll seminar tomorrow on marijuana, so. Oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> They've had so, so many seminars, but. I've got a number of questions, but yeah, yeah. there's a whole bunch of theories on changes. I mean, town, Bill and I talked earlier, town meeting, any town meeting, if the town meeting vote on a, on a, war, on a um, zoning change, so people can get up and move to amend it, in various yep. fashions like in any other situation, um, the Attorney General shouldn't have a problem with that. The only thing the Attorney General approves is the, uh, the zoning. They, don't, they have nothing to do with that other vote. But still, the two have to mesh in some fashion, so you don't want to have a situation where they don't. Right. But, there are so many permutations that it's worth going to seminar tomorrow. Okay, great. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, any other questions on the warrant? No, I don't have any. Improve with that 15 article pulled. I'm second. Yep. So vote in favor and make that unanimous. Okay, just to tell them the meeting. Next is the removal of a traffic aid. This um, developed from uh, one of our residents uh, reaching out to, to Rick and the police chief regarding a handicapped parking space located at 12 Grove Street in Milford. Very tight on parking in the street and the person that this space was created for has passed away. The space should be removed since it is a large space and no one is allowed to use it and it sits there empty most of the time. Um, and the police chief also concurred. I would recommend the Board of Selectmen vote to amend the traffic rules and regulations to remove the handicapped space at 12 Grove Street. Uh, move, Mr. Chairman. Second. I'll also vote in, vote in favor, and that's unanimous. Uh, we do have a letter from the Vernon Grove Cemetery trustees. They're looking for us to approve um, 800, for them to access the Avis Pond Interest Fund for $800 so that they can pay an invoice to Ackerman Monument. Move, Mr. Chairman. I would second that as well. I'll also vote in favor, and that's unanimous. Milford High School Boosters Club is looking for a one-day license for a cornhole tournament to raise money for the athletes. It's funny we have two of these tonight, too, to start. <laughs> Move. <laughs> second. And that's on October 14th, and hopefully uh, it's at Fino Field, and people are going to want to go, and the money goes to a good cause. 
Next, we have uh, correspondence from the Boston Regional Boston Region Metropolitan Planning Organization uh, looking for a TIP contact. It's recommended that our town engineer be that contact. I'd uh, move that to make it uh, our town engineer as the appoint the town engineer as a TIP contact. I would second that as well. And also vote in favor and make that unanimous. TD's Pub has a one-day license as well for cornhole tournament. Um, Ten fourteen eleven eleven oh, to six. Wow, same day, yeah. two same. coincided yeah. court hole tournaments. Yeah. <laughs> no. have to the competing tournament. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I'd move to approve. Second. <laughs> I'll also vote in favor and wish them a lot of luck as well. <laughs> yes. And this is uh, the next uh, agenda item of uh, new business is from uh, WMRC looking to renew the lease. Um, on uh, Charles River Street where they have their tower place like this seems to be something obviously that we have voted on in the past and the last time was 2013 yeah and the question is Jerry is there a uh, opportunity to uh, renegotiate this they're just putting forward without change um, and I'm just wondering well, if you did not renew then yeah they And so, Jerry, this must be only for their AM. <coughs> Charles River Street. Right, but I'm saying oh, it, it must be for their AM. Because I believe the new is shot off a satellite. Yeah. The that new building. satellite, yeah. the new building. You know more about that technology than I do. Okay. I believe you're right because this tower's been here for some yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there are a lot of folks getting paid a lot of money for the, the towers. And um, I'd like to renew the, uh, I'd like to look at the. Uh, Does it have an escalator built into it, Bill? I don't even No, so, so if they just submit the way it is, it always remains the same unless otherwise. I'm sure, and uh, exactly. <laughs> a number looks low, Jerry, so, you know, I was okay with it three years ago. Maybe we can uh, look and see what other communities are doing, what the benchmarks are. I don't think there are many that you can look at, and you certainly can't look at cell towers, you know, which is a whole other ballgame. You probably ought to have them in the process. And the question becomes, I swear they're sell on that, those towers. I, that's, another they, reason, that's another reason to have men and talk to them. I swear there is, but you could be right. If that's the case, that's anybody right. gets a high point, they're going to put sell on there. So yeah, when they then sublet off Correct. their towers. And this expires at the end of the calendar year, right? So we do have time so to have, have them come in. We're not so disrupting their business. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I would just recommend we hold off until yeah, Jerry get in communication with them. I would agree till we have more information. Okay. Any uh, new business, Bill? No other new business, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mike? I have none, sir. Okay. Next, we have a letter of resignation from Marsha Andriano on the Council of Aging, on, from the Milford Council on Aging. Um, and we received uh, this correspondence from Edward and Broth, the chairman, and also. Um, a note from Marsha that she's resigning for some personal reasons, so I just want to wish her wish her the best. Um, we also have some, um, uh, some of the folks that are interested. Can we send? I'm sorry. Can we send a note to Marsha too? Absolutely. Or I'm no. sure the senior the council yeah, on aging pride did too. Usually do. All right. Sense. Thank you very much because yeah. I'd I'd like that. Um, and they had voted, uh, Mr. Chairman, to recommend Dino D. Bartolome's yes. uh, former. Um, member of the Board of Selectmen. So I'd like to first deal with uh, the, uh, you know, the letter of resignation and thank Marsha, obviously, for, for her community commitment and her uh, effort on behalf of the community. And then the second thing is, consistent with the uh, Council on Aging's request uh, that Mr. Uh, recommending Mr. Dino D. Bartolome is to be appointed to the Council on Aging for the remainder of Ms. Andriano's term. I would make a motion to support that. And if I may, real quick, I also would like to say thank you to Marsha. As you know, people that serve the community, it's uh, 
It's a real commitment. It's very, very important. I want to say thank you, and Rick, I know you'll get some uh, letter out to her thanking her from the Board of Selectmen. That would be great. Then I would second Bill's motion. I would also recommend Dino to serve in the Council on the Aging. No, and I will vote in favor of that and make that unanimous. And actually, when we were at the, uh, well, Rick and I were at the Senior Center um, for Veterans Day, and they actually spoke. Dino's been spending a lot of time there yes. and volunteering a lot, and uh, it was good to see him again. And he's uh, talked about not leaving much room to time for re-engagement because he jumped right back into it. So it was good to catch up with him and congratulate him on this. Um, okay, uh, we don't have any other correspondence. I'd move to adjourn, Mr. Chairman, for the uh, purposes of executive session. I would second that. And I'll also vote in favor and make that unanimous. In executive session, we're going into executive session for uh, Milford Water Company negotiations and possible land acquisition. And we just need a roll, a roll call vote. Aye. Aye. I also vote in the affirmative. Thank you. We will not be returning uh, back to regular session. Uh, have a good night.